attracting some very special speakers. Good morning. Morning, Marlon. Hey, I, hey, Abby. So I believe, uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, I, I believe there should be some slides popping up. I don't know if anybody can see them. Uh, I'm just seeing. Okay, there we go. So we're starting on that. Get into presenter mode. Awesome. All right. Good morning. Um, I'm Marlon Prince. For anyone that doesn't know, I am the chairman of the St. John River chapter in New Brunswick. Um, we're a bit of a unique muskie fishery out here where uh, it's it's the newest muskie fishery in Canada. That's for sure. Um, and I know there's been a little bit of buzz about what uh, what we've got going on out east. So, uh, Abby, if you want to introduce yourself um, and then we'll kind of get started on the presentation and talk about what's going on in New Brunswick uh, on our fishery. For sure. So I am lucky enough to have worked with Marlin uh, through University of New Brunswick uh, projects. And we actually, I was a group of four students and we were able to kind of conduct a literature review research project, kind of looking into the sustainability of the fishery and some of the challenges that, that it potentially faces. Awesome. Thank you. So we'll, we'll hear more from Abby later in the presentation. Um, to kind of set the stage, uh, I wanted to uh, go through, for those of you who don't know about what's going on in New Brunswick, um, so my, my first slide here, not only do we have muskies in New Brunswick, uh, we've got a pretty special fishery, as you could maybe tell by some of the fish on that first pictures, um, as maybe, you know, if anyone who read the research journal a few years ago, Angelo Viola says uh, the fattest muskies in the world, perhaps, uh, live in our waters here in New Brunswick. Um, so this really is, to me, it's a trophy muskie fishery. It's world class. Not only do we have 50 inch fish, 40 pound fish, um, we, you know, we're seeing those fish log annually now. Um, it's possible, you know, for a recreational angler to catch 100 to 150 muskies per season at this point, uh, we're seeing those logs come in. So not only do we have the size, we have the numbers. Um, since I think 06, we've had a, 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 muskies, chap, a muskies Canada chapter that's, that typically supports 60 plus members. So a very active chapter of Muskies Canada out here interested in this fishery as well. Um, what I really want to get across is it's just a special place to fish out in New Brunswick. Um, you know, there's 55,000 square kilometers of the St. John River to choose from. Uh, it's, there's diverse ecosystems. Uh, it's, it's not just one river. Um, you know, if you're a caster, there's opportunities for that. If you like those, that kind of weed bed bucktail fishing. Uh, if you're a troller, we have deep open water reservoirs. Um, it, it ranges anywhere from a, a rural fishery where you can literally, in Fredericton, New Brunswick, um, get off work like right downtown and be on the water with a chance at a 40 pound muskie right there, right in the city. Uh, as well, we've got rural fisheries that, that kind of go through the, uh, you know, the towns, the, those rural landscapes of New Brunswick. Um, and, and then up, up to, in the upper St. John River, um, you've got that chance at that wild fishery, uh, three day canoe trips without seeing another soul. Um, you'll see more moose than people. It's, it's just pretty incredible how big this river is and how truly special it is. Um, what else is really cool about this brand new musky fishery is we get the chance to build this community, this musky community. Uh, and, and there's a lot of very passionate anglers out here. Um, you know, we're helping to support new local businesses. Um, there's opportunity to support the economy in a new way for, through this fishery. Uh, and I guess other than that, um, it's just really cool that, you know, that feeling of pioneering a fishery, um, you know, when you're going out there trying a new tactic, you're probably the first guy to do that. You know, it's, it's, uh, this fishery's really only been around since the early 2000s. So we don't even know its full potential. We, we know, you know, based on the fish that you're seeing in the pictures here, the fish that have been logged, uh, that there are 
um, you know, that, that world-class potential and, and it's here. So uh, we'll, we'll go a little bit more in depth here about how these fish got here. A lot of people probably know this story by now. I, I've done plenty of podcasts and seminars talking about it, but if you're not familiar in the 1970s, um, the Quebec ministry stocked a lake uh, at the headwaters of the St. John River. Um, I don't know if we change slides there. Pierre, can you change slides? Give people a little bit of chance to see what I'm talking about. So uh, that highlighted yellow line is the St. John River up in the headwaters there. Uh, nearly Quebec City is where it starts. That's where they stocked these muskies in Lac Frontier. Um, they stocked about 6,200 musk lunge from 7 to 20 centimeters. Um, during the eighties, we saw the fishery in Maine, uh, the St. John river runs through the state of Maine and borders New Brunswick and Maine. Um, we saw them started to report muskies and a small fishery started to develop, uh, around 1988, the first report from the Mactaquac dam, which is right in Fredericton. So towards the lower, um, section of that yellow highlighted, um, river there, uh, we, we saw that, uh, the first muskie was caught there. So that would have been an upstream migration. So it has to be assumed they were there in fairly decent numbers by then. Uh, in 1999, the uh, first scientific report was published on these muskies, uh, talking, you know, basically acknowledging their existence and uh, speaking about the potential uh, that they had on, on this ecosystem and on the St. John River. And again, as I mentioned before, around the early 2000s is when we saw uh, muskies New Brunswick form uh, an angling community started here in New Brunswick, uh, and uh, the, the St. John River chapter of Muskies Canada was formed in, in 06. Uh, next slide there, please. Thank you. So here's some milestones in New Brunswick. Um, you know, again, this is, this is just the proofs in the pudding that we have this trophy fishery out here. It truly is something special. We're seeing things that really aren't seen across the muskie world. Uh, in 05, a fish that was called the Oromocto fatty. Oromocto is a town uh, on the banks of the St. John River near Fredericton. A 43-inch by 25 and 3-quarter inch girth uh, fish was found. So we're talking about uh, almost a 40-pound, 40 43-incher. And you can see that bottom picked with the green background. Um, that was that fish. It just looks like a mutant is the only way to describe it. Um, you know, that's Steve Eldridge, a past chairman, a past DNR officer here in New Brunswick holding that fish. Um, about 07, natural reproduction is confirmed. Uh, we also, uh, the St. John River chapter using some scale samples confirmed that uh, we have the St. Lawrence strain of fish. So that was excellent news to prove that we have this world-class potential of muskies here um, on the St. John River. Um, in 2008, um, uh, Steve Eldridge, actually the same person holding that fish. He, again, past chapter chair. Uh, he caught a fish that was 52 inch by 27 inches. Uh, still stands as the, uh, I guess, unofficial New Brunswick record muskie here. Um, in 2010, uh, that fish you see on the top with the giant balloon of a belly, uh, that fish was found washed up on shore, uh, still alive, uh, out of season. Uh, it was 51 by 30 inches. So, um, you know, it's debated. I've read all the forms out there. Uh, Steve Eldridge, who's, you know, obviously a very trustworthy guy. He, he weighed it on multiple scales at 60 pounds. So, I mean, we're talking fish are approaching, uh, world record potential, depending on what, uh, what you call that. But, uh, in, in any regard, I, in my mind, there's only a handful of water bodies out there that have actually proven they're capable of producing a 60 pound fish. Uh, and the St. John River is one of them. So we, again, just, just really something special we have going on out east here. Um, from 2010 to 2020, I would say interest has really soared. Um, again, we, we've built a community. Uh, we've got our Muskies uh, Canada chapter. We've seen multiple highlights on, on this fishery, whether it be the Fish in Canada show, um, Fishful Thinking. Charlie Ray was up here to shoot an episode. Um, CBC has done uh, highlights on this. Uh, Hook A uh, is, a, is a group of fly anglers. I was lucky enough to film with them a few years ago um, on, on some border water with uh, Maine. Um, we've got Facebook groups in the thousands uh, that are just interested in, in catching muskies, trying to figure out what these fish are. Um, and we've also, uh, as a Muskies Canada chapter, we hosted a, a national event, which was a huge success. Anglers driving in from all over 
uh, Canada to, to come see these fish. And I, and I can say as a guide on the river, um, pre COVID, you know, I, I had clients from, uh, all over the States. I've had interest from Europe. Uh, I, I I've had interest from all over Canada, as far as BC people flying in, uh, because they want to catch a, a fat muskie on the St. John river and, and just experience what we have to offer. So, uh, if, if we can go to the next slide there, Pierre. So this is where the, uh, the kind of the challenges we face happen. Uh, in that picture is the Mac de Quack Dam. Um, so to kind of set the stage um, from the night, you know, the St. John River is traditionally a world famous salmon river. Um, the culture in New Brunswick is, is uh, very thick in, in salmon and trout. Uh, many people have probably heard about how famous the St. John River was. Uh, in, in, you know, the 60s and 70s for, for their salmon fishery, as well as the Miramichi, the Restigouge, etc. So not everyone is, you know, super pleased to have this new, quote unquote, invasive species. I suppose at one time they were invasive. Uh, I like to think of them now as naturalized just because they've been a, a part of this ecosystem for so long. So um, not everybody wants these muskies here. Not everybody is as happy to have them here. Um, you know, they're, they're continually deemed a potential threat to native species on the river. Um, unfortunately, that upstream migration, so when muskies are coming up, uh, there's a fish ladder at that dam. Um, they're actually caught and euthanized by DNR. Um, unfortunately, we've got data over the past two, three seasons uh, that suggests over 60 muskies are killed per year at the Mactaquac Dam um, as well. Uh, you know, our bag limit used to be 10 fish per day. A few years ago, we got that changed in New Brunswick to five per day. And as you can see, it's five to 170 centimeters. So basically, there's no protection for these muskies. Uh, it's so important that Muskies Canada has and continues to do a great job promoting catch and release in the muskie community. I think that's really helped. But uh, obviously, we really want to make a push for a change, have these fish recognized uh, for what they are, a naturalized uh, game fish in this in this uh, river that uh, really offers, like I like I've proven here, um, world class angling potential. So, um, awesome, thanks, Pierre. So, some research that's been done on the river um, in 1999, uh, the first paper deemed muskies here to stay. Uh, to quote the paper, it was doubtful that angling pressure will have an effect, uh, and it was kind of uh, looked at as a mixed blessing. Um, 36 stomachs were examined. Uh, no trout or salmon were, were found uh, at that time. Um, in 2007, there was another study that basically used isotope data to deem the uh, maximum potential salmon smolt. Uh, salmon smolt are, are basically year of young salmon. Um, they're, they weigh 40 grams. So they were saying uh, pretty much perhaps at the absolute most 3.9% of muskies diet on the St. John River could have been the salmon smolt. And again, to quote the, uh, the paper, uh, it is highly improbable that musk lunge have a significant effect on the salmon population in this reach of the St. John River. Um, so furthermore to these points in 2016, uh, there was a pretty good big study done. Um, 96 stomach contents of muskies, uh, 96 musky stomachs contents were examined. And again, no trout and salmon were found. So, um, you know, we're, we're these, these papers, uh, which some of them muskies Canada have, have worked with these, uh, biologists, um, you know, it's really starting to paint the picture that, Hey, these fish aren't a, a threat to the, the native species. That's all just seems to be potential. Um, so what is Muskies Canada doing then to try and, uh, to try and save these fish and, uh, you know, protect them here. So, uh, this is some of the accolades or, or, or some of the achievements that Muskies Canada has done in, in their past uh, years here in New Brunswick. Pierre, if you could switch the slide again for me. So, uh, thank you so much to Peter Lavick and the crew at the National BOD with Muskies Canada. Um, the spotlights you guys have done for, for our river and our chapter out here have just been incredible. You can see on the left, um, an entire release journal episode from spring 2018 was dedicated to the St. John River, talking about all different sorts of uh, aspects of our fishery here. So uh, a bit more about our chapter in New Brunswick. Uh, we run four Muskies Canada uh, events per year. 
as well as a Big Brothers and Big Sisters events where we hook up with the bigs and littles and take them for a fun day of fishing. And, it, and, and that certainly is not just all musky fishing. It's bass, um, chain pickerel, wet, perch, whatever. Just, just get some kids the opportunity to get on a boat and, and enjoy the water. Uh, in 2018, we invited members from all over Canada uh, for a two-day national challenge, and that was a huge success. Uh, there was an episode of Fishing Canada filmed for that one. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I suggest checking it out. I, I was so amazing to, to meet a bunch of people from Muskies Canada, from across uh, Canada, and, and I made some great friends uh, during that time as well. Um, our, 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 our angler logs out, out east have shown uh, an increase in size and catch rate. Uh, at one time, Muskie's Can uh, Canada St. John River chapter was one of the most active um, chapters as far as our angling logs. Um, from, 26, from 2006 to 2014, we ran a tagging study where 691 muskies were angled, tagged, and released. Um, we basically found results are similar with uh, naturally reproducing fish elsewhere in North America. So our muskies are not uh, too much different, except for that it seems like they have a lot of food and uh, big, those, those big bellies that we all love. Um, so we're still getting research recatches from that, uh, from that tagging study, which is just super cool when you catch a fish and you can look back and find out um, where that fish originally came from. My biggest fish last year was a 40 pound fish that, uh, I think was caught at 38 inches, roughly seven years ago. So, um, you know, once again, proving catch and release works and, and just really cool to see the history on fish like that. So, um, the St. John river chapter is also represented at the, at the St. John river management, um, community in, in New Brunswick, which is basically uh, a group of a lot of salmon groups. It's made up of DNR, DFO. Uh, it's an advisory committee. I know I kind of messed that one up there a second ago. But uh, yeah, so the St. John River chapter is there. We're also in uh, part of the NBWF, is the New Brunswick Wildlife Federation. So being a part of these uh, local organizations, we're able to uh, see what's going on in, in just the, the, the natural world, uh, you know, the river communities and, and make... Uh, make uh, suggestions, um, review changes to regulations, et cetera, here. Um, as well, uh, tons of promotion with uh, for our events. Media covers, coverage has gained local and natu uh, national notoriety and support from local government. Um, to kind of speak on that, we have Abby here um, who, you know, as la last summer, basically, I had, a me I had a meeting with our Minister of Natural Resources to talk about this fishery and, again, just talk about how popular it's getting, how many new anglers we're seeing on the water, um, talking about the need for conservation and protection of these fish. Um, so I think that kind of led to a, a new, a, a, our latest study uh, on these muskies. And we're looking basically to make recommendations to change bag limits, um, really understand the population density here. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to let Abby take it away because she is the, uh, th this is her part of the presentation. She, her and her group at the University of New Brunswick did just an amazing job on this. So um, yeah, Abby, take it away when you need to change the slide. Just uh, let Pierre know. Awesome. Thank you. Um, can we jump to the next slide, please? So as Marlon said, I'm with uh, University of New Brunswick and myself and three other members of um my class got together and we worked closely with Marlin and their research director, um, the provincial government, all to kind of determine, you know, uh, basically sort of a, a sustainability of this fishery, um, both for the fishery and for the native species. We we're kind of taking everything into consideration. So uh, if you just want to go to the next slide, please. So this kind of shows our study area. The um, it's not super visible, but the red box is around um, where we focus. So we we specifically focus on from Woodstock, the Grafton Bridge, uh, all the way down to the Mactuac Dam, which is just outside of Fredericton. Um, and we did a lot within this this survey, which I'll get into a little bit. Uh, can we go to the next slide? 
So our project specifically focused on what we need to do to have a healthy, sustainable population of muskies in the St. John River. Um, the key word here being sustainable. And we define sustainable as, you know, small oscillations of the population around a carrying one central carrying capacity, as you can see on the graph in, on the right. Um, what we don't want to see and what would be really concerning would be uh, boom bust cycles, as you can see on the left. Um, so that's an issue because if you were to increase angling pressure or or, you know, um, natural mortality, maybe there's a stressful, stressful year for them with the heat, whatever. Um, and they're in that that bust cycle, um, they could actually wipe out the population, which could be really detrimental. Um, and then with this, there's also negative interactions with the with the environment around them, right? So um, can we jump to the next slide? We focused on three main project questions. Um, so the first one was, is the current management sufficient for sustainability? Uh, we wanted to know where the population was currently in relation to carrying capacity. And we wanted to know if the, the fishery will be sustainable in the future. Um, so next slide, please. So to do this, we determined, uh, we investigated the status of the fishery and we did this in three main groups. So we first started out with a baseline estimate, which I'll get into next. Um, then we went into fishing demand and then we went into the, a we actually built a population model, my, uh, our team did. Um, and then based on that, we were able to, to answer some questions. So for the baseline estimate, we we asked three three main questions. How many fish do we have? Where are they? And what size are they? And just a general, general age class. Um, next slide, please. So for the baseline estimate, we actually went out on the boat with Marlin with his sonar and we investigated, um, I believe it was an eight kilometer stretch uh, from the grafted bridge down to Bulls Creek, which is highlighted in pink in the upper left corner. Um, and then next slide, please. We did this by gathering uh, GPS points on any fish that were identified at 30 inches or above. Um, and that was in conjunction with the help of Marlin. And uh, we specifically chose this range. So there was no inner overlap with, you know, chain pickerel or we don't have sturgeons above the dam. So we, that wasn't a concern. Um, or any of the other fish, right? So the sonar survey data, uh, just the raw points you can see in the graph or the, the map on the far left. So from there, we took that and applied it to bathymetric data, and which is in the middle, which we got from the Mactoquack Aquatic Ecosystem Study through Canadian Rivers Institute. And then from there, we went actually went and, and stratified the data or, and determined densities of each population or each um, each different strata. And you can see kind of an example of the final stratification on the, the far right. We then took this and applied it to the complete stretch of the river of our study area. Can we go to the next slide, please? So we estimated between, for that stretch from, from Grafton Bridge all the way down to uh, the Mactawak down, there's roughly 401 adults. Um, and now this is the key part of this is remember these are 30 inches and greater so there's fish under that um this is just basically a starting point for the population estimate um we do recognize that these are not by far absolute numbers uh we were only able to get out and do one survey you know ideally you'd get out and do multiple over the course of the season um and because this was done so late in the fall there is a potential seasonal bias you know they were moving up closer to spawning habitats maybe we got more and overestimated but this was a good relative starting point for us to launch off on Next slide, please. So then we built this graph um, or this figure based on the angler logs and tagging data that we got from Marlin and the St. John River chapter. And we basically approximated that the, the, fish is, the fishery is at carrying capacity, roughly. And this is indicated by, as you can see, the really big, tall peaks in uh, sort of around the center of the graph. Um, so if you look back, they actually drop down and level out. And that's an indication to us that, you know, the fishery isn't growing actively. You know, we hit a big, big peak and then it kind of levels out. And then um, if you can, if you can go to the next slide. So these are those, the same graphs, just as total rod, um, total fish over time, and then comparing it to the rod hours over time. And so as you can see, these lines are roughly around this the, this 2016, where we see that stabilization in the fishery, like the, the catching. Um, so you can see that, you know, it, it's kind of validated that we're at carrying capacity just simply because, you know, there's not, we kind of stayed at the same amount of rod hours beyond this point, um, but we don't see a super huge increase in the amount of fishing caught. And we would assume if the population was still growing, we would be continuing to catch more for the same amount of effort. 
The next slide, please. So now we kind of go into the phishing demand. So this was uh, consisted of three main parts. So we actually conducted a stakeholder survey uh, through Facebook and, and email, and I'll get into that in a little bit. And this was basically to establish current and future phishing pr uh, pressure. And this was then, uh, same with this baseline estimate, it all went into the population model. Next slide, please. So current phishing pressure was uh, determined by how many anglers do we currently have and how much harvest is there currently because that is a concern right we don't know harvest for this the, for this fish and and we don't know how much of an impact that harvest is having if we don't know how much harvest there is to begin with so then we looked at the future future fishing pressure how many new anglers are we going to have how many new non-resident anglers are we going to have and how much interest is there in in new anglers harvesting next slide please so this is where our, we, our stakeholder survey comes in. And so I was in charge of that and we reached out um, via email and Facebook and it was, we had a terrific turnout. If anybody watching right now responded to this survey, thank you so much because this is, we were super excited to get the, this, the response that we did. We had re 677 responses total and we had respondents from all demographic, all age education levels, and literally all across North America. We had um, responses clear from Nova Scotia all the way out to Alberta, and we actually had respondents from 12 different states, including Oklahoma. So we were super excited about that. And we focused a lot on you know, thematic type questions. Okay, what are people's concerns? What are, um, you know, what else do people fish? Um, are people specifically interested and concerned about salmon? Are they concerned about other native species? And then we got into, okay, have you fished muskies? Are you interested in fishing in the future? You know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we specifically identified or asked non-residents to identify themselves. And from there, we asked specific non-resident questions in relation to, are they interested in coming? That kind of stuff. Next slide, please. I just want to stop. Can I hop in for a sec, Abby? Yes. I just want to say thank you so much to everybody that shared, that that filled out that survey. It was a huge, huge help for this project. Uh, and, and it's just proof about how amazing Muskies Canada is. I know almost everybody in Muskies Canada, all the other, uh, all the other chapters uh, on their Facebook pages, that survey, you know, I put it out on my personal page and on our St. John River page, and it just spread like wildfire. And that's how we got all these responses. So that in itself is uh, Muskies Canada at work in a, in a huge way. Thank you, everybody to who took the time to share and take that survey. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that personally. So continue, Abby. Awesome. Um, okay, so uh, really quickly, we had 12% of respondents currently fish for muskie. That's projected to increase to 84%, which was super, like we expected an increase, but this was way beyond what we expected. Um, of that, we had 92% interest of non-residents traveling to New Brunswick, which is good news for, you know, guides like Marlin. We're going to have a lot of people interested in coming, more economic uh, tourism and stuff. And then the real key in, in this in this slide is looking at the harvest. So we have currently 3% of people harvest, which isn't super concerning in and of itself. You know, there's not there's not a lot of interest. There's um, this kind of shows that that your guys' catch and release um, is, is working. You know, you're doing really well. Um, this is only projected to increase to 15%, which in and of itself is not a huge increase, um, but it is something to keep in mind moving forward. Um, next slide, please. So I'm briefly going to go over the population model. Um, it's super complicated. This is just a very simplified version of it for this presentation. Um, you know, we use a lot of empirical data. We use a lot of literature um, studies. Um, we use data that we got from the St. John River chapter and put it into this to determine, you know, um, we ha that's we helped with the baseline estimate. Then we got some um, length regression and we were able to get ages from that. Um, and then we actually ended up running some simulations with this. So uh, if you can go to the next slide. So when we did our model analysis, we ran three specific scenarios. Uh, we ran status quo, which is a retention size of four to 60 inches, roughly. Um, and then we chose two potentially, uh, or uh, two different 
uh, scenarios that could potentially be implemented in the future. So our first was catch and release because ideally that's where that's where we we understood that you guys want to push this, right? So the second one, however, we did implement a slot size. We chose 30 to 40 inches based on uh, studies that we found in the states, and this was also. Um, just specifically chosen for uh, by the literature review. And we also, uh, we wanted to focus on fecundity. So we wanted to leave the little guys to grow up to re a reproductive size. And we wanted to leave the big guys so that they can, they can reproduce once they get past that 40 inches. Okay, the key part is don't get focused on the numbers. Those numbers can be shifted one way or another. These two graphs right here. So the, the green line at the top is a current baseline forecast with zero mortality in, incorporated. Then you get the, the black line is the catch and release. And you can see it's closely tied both at 10% and 30% additional mortality with the blue line. Blue line is that slot size. And finally, you can see the yellow line. The yellow line is our status quo. So as you can see, the status quo is just, it kind of maintains below the, the catch and release in the slot size. And it starts to get a little wavy around 30% mortality. So this in and of itself isn't concerning, but it is a, a note for us that, you know, at 30% mortality, the, the fishery could, could become more susceptible to, to uh, mortality. Next slide, please. So based on our project, we, identified three implications. So first, current management works for our current angling pressure. Um, muskie appear to be approaching their carrying capacity. Um, and then the third one is the key here. Angling pressure, as it increases, need the regulations may need to be revised. And that's our key uh, moving forward from this. Next slide, please. So there's four improvements that if we were to do this project again, that we would we would look at. First, we had a number of data gaps. Second, we had some limitations to our data, and I'm going to get into both of those in a little bit. Um, third, we have to remember that all of this, all of this research that we have, needs to be taken in relative terms, not absolute. These aren't solid numbers. Uh, more research does need to be done to kind of solidify those, right? And the third, or the the fourth and final one is we need to identify future angling in New Brunswick. You know, our stakeholder survey was a really good start, um, but we need to, to to solidify those numbers to say, okay, how much angling is gonna, how much is angling going to increase? Because realistically, that's what this this fishery comes down to. Next slide, please. So really quickly, um, our our data gaps and and limitations to our data focus around these kind of points. So first, we don't know exact egg survival, especially not in the St. John River. We have no data whatsoever, which made it very difficult for us to, you know, identify recruitment of the of young of the year. We also want to know more about fecundity, specifically for muskie. So how many fish do those those big guys produce? We have rough ranges and we can assume that that as they get older they they produce more eggs. But exactly what is that relationship? Is it logarithmic? Is it or sorry, is it uh, linear or is it exponential? Third, we want to identify spawning ha habitat impacts specifically above the dam and what those impacts are on fecundity and and juvenile survival. Third, we need to identify in uh, relation to each other, what is angling mortality contributing to mortality and what is natural mortality contributing? Because that's key, right? We we understand we can't do much about natural mortality, but we can work with angling mortality. Uh, the no next point, more sonar surveys. We want more thorough sonar surveys, different seasons, different areas, conduct them all over the place. They're super easy to do. And it, it would some something that would really help solidify that population estimate, which would be great. Then um, population studies outside the study area, but that kind of goes with the, the sonar survey as well. We want to identify kind of what impacts immigration and emigration have on the population, um, just to see how much muskies are moving in and out. Um, and then finally, individual movements specific to the St. John River. We have other jurisdictions that have conducted some similar surveys, um, but you know it would be nice to have this this data local to ours. And I believe that's all I've got. Um, you can, can you stay on that previous slide for me, Pierre? Thank you. So, Abby, I just want to say thanks to you and the entire team. It was a pleasure to actually have you guys out on my boat. Uh, I, I want to let everybody know, give like the scope you guys were able to go on this project, 
given the limited amount of time you actually had to do field work and put this all together is pretty incredible. For those that don't know, um, I, I think it was around October, you guys were told uh, maybe late September that you'd be doing this project. And you guys had to have this all put together by the beginning of April, which really only gave you October and some of November to be on the water as uh, our season closes in November up here uh, on the on the water you were studying, obviously ice and that sort of thing. Uh, so you just had limited amount of time and what you guys were able to put together is incredible. Um, this slide means a lot to me um, just because obviously as a muskie angler and a guide, uh, someone in muskies Canada, we all want to know more about our fish. The more research, the better the more we can learn about how they live their lives. It helps us catch them. It helps us protect them. It helps us put rules in place, et cetera. Um, so anglers are very excited about this, but I want, I'm, I'm hoping uh, you can tell everybody like the feelings on muskies at UNB, what the students have to say about muskies there. Um, you kind of mentioned there was a bit of a buzz on that. I'll, I'll let you, uh, expand there I, I you know i remember when you started this and we're out in the boat you, what you told me uh, about like i said the general feeling of muskies at unb yeah i i don't know that i can speak to that too much um <laughs> I, I can't speak for everybody else i know that um you know looking at the literature looking at and conducting this this study um i i don't feel that that we've got I don't feel that this fishery is of a concern to the native populations. And, and you know, there's there's a lot of really cool research that, that could be done and needs to be done that would be super cool to be a part of. Just just being out on the water with you guys was really interesting to me. Um, and I know that that there's a lot of other people that feel the same way. And these are a super cool fish. Um, working in fisheries specifically, I know that, you know, this, this would be a, a fun fishery to work with or a fun fish to work with, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just the fact that they're new on this river and oh, and yeah. uh, so there's so much unknown about them that's uh, again that's what's that's what a big part of what makes the St. John River really cool um there's a lot of interest in this fishery um and, and I guess uh, to kind of expand on that it, it's amazing that we're starting to see the support from um you know local anglers there again we're building a community around this and uh, i guess without further ado I, i'd like to introduce our our minister of natural resources um mike holland is actually here to give us a word of, of support so mike if you're there take take it away man absolutely i'll begin with my first level of support being wearing my uh my musky shirt <laughs> right on man yeah, no, I really appreciate having a chance to come here and talk with you guys. Um, for anybody that's listening, we couldn't have stronger advocates or we couldn't have stronger uh, people who want to see the musky fishery in New Brunswick expand and be all that it can be. Uh, I've known Marilyn quite a while. I've just had a chance to meet Abby recently. And, and the advocacy uh, of, of the musky chapter here in New Brunswick is I believe uh, world class. Uh, they they continually are driving the agenda of putting in front of me, government, um, and anybody that'll listen about the incredible opportunity that we have here in New Brunswick. Uh, I've grown up in New Brunswick. I'm an angler myself, and have had the chance to spend time on the water with Marlin and other folks uh, who are musky enthusiasts, and in particular in that St. John River system. Now, in my role as the Minister of Natural Resources, one of the things that that I take very, very seriously is our outdoor heritage. Um, it's what built our province and we have an incredible opportunity in front of us with, uh, with Muscalange. And I have always said that, that we must, as government, we must take on the role of, of ensuring that there's a sustainable future for fins, fur, feather, anything that calls the woods and the water of New Brunswick home. And, and I, I know that I've personally seen this fishery emerge uh, in, in the province over the last few years. And I strongly stand behind supporting the and further enhancement and development of that. I, you know, having people like Marlon and Abby and others as well be able to bring to the table, uh, not just conversations, but back it up with university led data. It certainly makes my job as a legislator easier I'm an advocate to begin with because I come from that background. That that's a lifestyle that I grew up with. But I am not alone. I work with governments and different departments, and 
and to have the ability for folks to be equipping me with the information I need to to lead the charge is 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 it, it's invaluable and it's very much appreciated. Uh, we've embarked in New Brunswick upon some uh, historic conservation methods uh, of doubling and protecting conserved areas in the province of New Brunswick. Now that's land mass, and so we're talking about river systems. But I firmly believe that if you protect land mass in the proper and and strategic ways. It'll have a benefit on our river systems. Uh, I believe that the St. John River is an ecosystem that is absolutely alive. I'm, I'm marveled by it. Every time I go on the river and I see the vegetation and the and the and, and the various species mix, the diverse species mix of fish in the river, we want to focus on ensuring that that is sustainable by going from the shoreline back and and working on building buffer zones that are appropriate for what the conservation requirements are. Uh, in other river systems, you know, we're protecting cold water pools for salmon areas up in the northern part of the province. And, 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 and we have a long history of salmon fishing here in the province of New Brunswick, and I'm proud of that. And we're going to work towards ensuring that continues. Uh, that's a legacy item for us. But we're not going to do it at the expense of other species. And here we are talking about muskies today. And, and I believe that it's an incredible opportunity. Another is initiative that we're embarking upon is we want to work with our federal counterparts in the Department of Fisheries and Oceans to develop an MOU with the province of New Brunswick, not unlike other jurisdictions have, that will allow us to have the ability to read and react to situations in our river systems in more of a real-time fashion and have more influence and impact over how we handle certain situations here in, the, in, in, in our inland bodies and waters. Um, combined with the conservation efforts and the ability to have more of an influence over our water systems here in New Brunswick, and of course with the continued support of stakeholders like Muskies Canada, uh, I very much look forward to what the future is going to hold here. I certainly um, uh, don't want to highlight Marlon, uh, but he's a he's a he's a, in my opinion a world renowned guy. Uh, just being on the boat with him and the the things I learned about habitat, about the the fish themselves, is phenomenal. Now I haven't boated one yet, and my plan is to hopefully <laughs> get a chance to do that in the not too distant future. But it's. It's fishing in such a way where if you're an angler and, 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 and you love being out on the water, being out to fish musky and not catch one, but mark them, see how finicky they are, you know, drag the, drag the lure over their nose a hundred times and then watch their behavior. That in and of itself was a phenomenal experience. Now, I can't wait to hoist one of those. Uh, big fatties and, and, and put that on the list of species that I've, uh, I've, I've brought to the boat. Uh, but I know with what's going on in New Brunswick, I know with what's going on with the Muskie chapter here in New Brunswick, and I know with our commitment as a government to, to see those uh, those uh, dreams become a reality, it's not going to be too long before I do. So I just uh, take my hat off to, to, to Marlon, to Abby. There's so many other people uh, in New Brunswick that I'm not mentioning because the list would be way too long. But we're passionate about expanding the opportunities for us to have a world-class musky fishery here in the province. I'm humbled to be in a position where I can play a role in that, and I'm committed to doing just that. So uh, for, for having me here, I really appreciate it. I know you're going to carry on with a bunch of uh, uh, different sessions and meetings and whatnot. And I also know that when that's done and there's more information, Marlon will be knocking on my door. And it's always open to you, Marlon, to Abby and to anybody that wants to make those waterways better by enhancing the fisheries that we have. So I appreciate you inviting me here. I'm gonna leave you to your, uh, to your day, to your seminars, and I'm very thankful for you. So take care and here's to great days on that St. John River system and massive world records that we don't even know yet being hosted. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, I, I mean, I, I think I speak for everyone with Muskies Canada to say it's just incredible to have someone at your level of government that's, you know, as excited about this muskie fishery as, as everyone with Muskies Canada. Um, yeah, just just incredible. It, it, uh, again, this is the we, we know the potential that we have out here in New Brunswick. And uh, it, it's amazing to, again, see someone in government that appreciates that. And yeah, if nothing else, this uh, this seminar, putting that slide together and with so, your name on uh, it. Thank uh, you, Brian oh. Sturch. Uh, we
Oh, technical difficulty. Yeah, I don't know. Some Ryan Pickering popped in there. I, I think they're telling us we're done. I think that's it. I know we've got about a minute left. Um, if I, 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 we didn't get time for Q and A, but if anyone does have any questions they want answered about the St. John River Muskie chapter, feel free. Hit me up on Facebook. It's Marlon Prince, uh, and, and I always find the time to get back to everybody. Uh, I, I know I'm, I'm in touch with Mike and Abby all the time, so if you need answers from them, I can certainly help you. Um, yeah, on behalf of the St. John River chapter of Muskies Canada, thank you for everybody that helped put this seminar together. Uh, I, I think there's big things to come from New Brunswick still uh, and, and just keep realizing this amazing potential this, this fishery has. So thank you, everybody. Check us out. Guys, I'll catch up with you later. Thanks, auction team. And I appear to be back on the other feed. How is everything going over here? So I am on Muskies Canada official and I am live, but I have no audio coming through. So I am going to continue on as though I am broadcasting until someone tells me different. Can you hear me, Marlon? Are you uh, I, reading I can me? hear you. I can oh, hear great. you, Ryan. Yeah, cool. Excellent. I wasn't. I, I thought we had 45 minutes, so I can keep talking muskies all day if you want yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you did have 45 minutes, and I understand. I wasn't watching it, but I've been reading some of the messages while I'm over on Muskies Canada Mississauga live auction team, and they said that some of the information being shared was historic. And so that sounds, uh, that sounds really exciting. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, I, I know you know a little bit about the St. John River and, and what's going on out here. It, it's just, there's so much potential. Uh, I, I think the whole point, um, you know, of my seminar was really, you know, how much interest there is in this river from local anglers, um, how cool it is to be a part of a fishery that, uh, you know, we're kind of the right, we're writing the book on it. Um, you know, I, I'm That's one of the first incredible. guides on the St. John River for muskies. Um you're talking 60 pound fish washing up on shore. That's, uh, you know, there's only, again, there's only a handful of, of bo water bodies that can do that. That's uh, for and, sure. And our, our river's proven it. So, well, Marlon, I personally want to thank you mostly because I plan on coming to fish with you very soon. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm in your good graces. And so, <laughs> Absolutely, uh, Mar man. Marlon, wonderful to have you. I enjoy watching your broadcasts. And so we'll definitely have you back. Maybe we'll pick this up on the wrap up show. But for now, my producer will say farewell to you. And Thank you. we'll split the screen with the live auction, a part of the live auction.